Welcome to another edition of Wings Weekly. Jay Klein Connect here, along with, of course, head coach Scott Langer. Coach, season 10 is uh, officially underway. The regular season getting started for the Wings over uh, at the Showcase in Blaine. And uh, by the way, season 10, if you don't, haven't had a chance to check out the new uniforms or the new sweaters yet, check out the, the X, that of course, the Roman numeral for, uh, for 10. So kind of commemorating the, the 10th season, pretty cool. Um, coach, lots to talk about, obviously, with four games in four days. But um, I thought we'd kind of try to break them down individually a little bit and then maybe kind of take a look at the at things out overall. But it started on Wednesday, of course, with a 4-5 loss to the Lone Star Brahmas, um, a game that featured Virtus with a hat trick and a, a strong third period. The second was a little off at times, but um, what did you think of that game overall? Uh, I thought the second was way off, uh, not a little off. I mean, we gave up five odd man rush of goals. So, um, you know, they came out prepared in the second period, and that was the difference in the hockey game. You know, we showed some fight and pushback in the third period, but, uh, you know, that, that's that's a tough team to, to think you're going to come back on after giving up uh, five goals like, like we did. Real physical matchup, too. And then, like I said, it, you know, the third – was strong, but I really liked the surge and the energy that, uh, you know, there wasn't any quit in them. So you got to at least like that, huh? Yeah, I, I thought that, though, that that exhausted us a little bit, you know, having to having to play that way in the third period, especially uh, when you have so many games in so few days. Uh, I, I thought that uh, that taxed us a little bit heading into the next day. Sure. OK, well, then speaking of the next day, going into Thursday, you pick up a point with an overtime loss to Wilkes-Barre Scranton. Uh, the final there was 2-3. What did you take away from uh, the matchup with the Knights? Yeah, I thought we played a good hockey game, and uh, I, I thought that uh, we, we obviously have to do a better job of getting to the net and getting to the priority areas and paying the price to score goals. So it's a, a game like that isn't uh, as tight as it was. And, you know, you, you take it to overtime where, you know, this early in the season, um, a lot of guys coming out of midget hockey and, 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 you know, not junior hockey, you're not used to playing three on three. And, um, kind of a soft shot that, that ends up going against the grain in back of the net and you lose the hockey game. So another game there that you, you probably had an opportunity to win if you uh, if you dug down a little harder than we did. Okay, uh, moving on, Friday, a game against uh, Fairbanks, a, a rematch of the championship game, a game that seemed like it could have been uh, the biggest challenge going into the week anyway, but your guys were up to it and uh, ended up winning that one 3-0, a, a really good start seemed to, to kind of set the pace, scoring three goals in the first period. And then uh, Cybele was fantastic between the pipes and, and, and earned the shutout. Um, Got to feel pretty good about that uh, that game. Yeah, you know, that was probably the up until that point, that was the best team that we had seen in the, in the tournament as far as the skill level, the ability to skate. Uh, you know, those guys play a real good 200 foot game and they got uh, you know, the, the veteran goaltender there in that that took him to the Robertson Cup. But, you know, we came out ready to go in that game. We were uh, we, we took the night before um, result and, and we were ready to go and, and we, we definitely jumped on them. And, and when they did push back because they pushed back hard, we were we were in good spots. We blocked a lot of shots and we had great goaltending uh, by Cybele. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned, they pushed back hard. There was a lot of shots uh, taken by the uh, ice dogs. And like you said, Key, uh, key there would be some block shots and fantastic goaltending. All right, an early morning Saturday game against the Northeast Generals. Well, your squad came up short and lost 1-2. Some costly turnovers really kind of seemed to be the difference in that one. Yeah, you know, it's kind of uh, all the things we talked about for three straight days, uh, you know, how to approach winning hockey games uh, kind of came back to bite us. Uh, we, you know, we whether we were tired and we mentally made mistakes, but you know, we, we uh, it, what cost us is exactly what we were talking about is managing pucks and putting them in the right spot. So you're not turning it over and you're not feeding their offense. And um, you know, both, both their goals were, were directly from, from major turnovers. And when you're playing four games in four nights, you, you know, it only takes one or two mistakes to lose a hockey game. And uh, on the other side, we, we we didn't pay the price that we needed to pay to to score goals. It wasn't from lack of opportunity, that's for sure. I mean, we uh, we basically did what we wanted to do offensively, and we couldn't find a way to score. So, um, very frustrating uh, way to leave the leave the showcase when when there was a lot of points we as a hockey team as as a franchise we left on the table. So. Um, this week, back to basics and, and uh, start getting prepared the right way to, to play a good team in Austin. Well, one of the things that you 
a lot, well, a lot of your teams have have, uh, have done well as transition. And last year's team, I, I thought they did a great job of that, of you know, moving the puck and transitioning from zone to zone. Um, what are some keys, and how can you how can you get to see some improvement in that uh, in that area in this team? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's just you know that was a two year in progress thing. Uh, what, what you see in last year, it just takes time, and mm -hmm. when you only have you know five six guys coming back, and, and you have uh, you have guys that haven't played that style of hockey, it's going to take time. And um, you know we're we're so early in the season that I don't think you can see the. Uh, uh, the transition part of the hockey game and that's the area that we're we're usually good at so we're gonna have to improve that and the only way to do that is just stick with it and and it's it's buy-in you know getting you know we definitely have the decor capable of getting pucks headed north and, and in a hurry you know our de decor is very good um now we just have to, to to get our forwards involved a little bit and and pick up the pace sounds good well like you said coach uh, it's early in the season I and mean, the showcase is a great event with all the teams there and everything but and a lot of and of course all the scouts and everything but it isn't about where you start the season it's about where you finish um what are, what would you say are some some of the positives that you saw over the over the four days some things that you and, and coach hill and and josh you know were able to talk about and say man i really like the way this is going or whatever uh, i you know i think on the whole on the whole big picture i think it's uh our guys are guys were put in their place and I think the big thing for us is understanding no matter what we have a bullseye on our back everybody wants to beat the defending champions and I went down to you know after the Wilkes Bar game I went down to, to shake their coaches hands and all you heard from their players is you know F the champions F the champions and this the champions and and it just goes to show you I mean you, you're marked mm -hmm. and you know what this this group of guys they came in they wanted to be a wing and so they wanted to embrace that and uh, you know, this weekend, this this last four games, we figured out real quick we're going to get everybody's best game, and, and we have to be pretty sharp in order to win. Absolutely. Well, we'll talk about what's coming up uh, with the, the home opener here in just a moment, but we'll take a quick break and be back with these words from our sponsor. Welcome back as we continue on with Wings Weekly. Well, Coach, uh, we kind of alluded to it uh, in the in the first segment there, but Austin coming to town this weekend uh, with the, the home opener. They left the showcase 2-1-1. One, and one. Um, You saw these guys in the preseason um, on for two games. What do you know about Austin, and what do you have to do to, to come uh, come away with a couple of wins this weekend? Well, Austin's always well coached, and their, their structure's always in place, and their players play to their structure, and they don't give a whole lot up normally, and they're a physical hockey team. You know, every game that we've played against Austin in the last few years has, has been a physical contest that, mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they were tough to play against. So, you know, they got a lot of those guys back this year, and, and uh, they got a, a veteran team that, again, you know, you just have to do things right. It's, it's the same, same part of the equation at this time of the year. You know, everybody's in the same spot, but, you know, the mistakes are going to really hurt you. And, and, then, and you have to be competitive. You got to compete. And, you know, this weekend we got a team coming in our building. How good they are, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, this weekend's about our work rate, about our competitive spirit. And uh, I think if we take care of what we're capable of taking care of, the points will, will, will be there. Excellent. Okay. Well, last week uh, on this show, we talked about leadership and filling the void of guys like Dalton Weigel and, and Jonathan Bendorf and Nick Sicoli and so on. Uh, but um, Tuesday, the uh, season's captains were announced uh, with Jake Bonet wearing the C and Riley Murphy, Pearson Brandon, and Antonio DiPaolo with uh, the A's on their sweaters. And uh, I wanted you to, if you would, talk a little bit about these guys and what they bring to the table uh, and also what goes into making that decision. Well, I had the, uh, you know, I was able to take uh, Jake Bonet with me to, to Russia and play in that World Cup. And, and uh, you know, knowing Jake and kind of how he approaches things, I thought he'd be a good leader for a team like that. And it was kind of an, an audition for, for Jake for, for me to kind of see the, the way he was going to lead. And I thought he did a great job with a group of guys that were from all over the league. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jake's just a no-nonsense guy. 
and it's going to be done right. It's going to be done his way, and he's on board with the wing's way, and and, and that's his approach to the game. And I think uh, he, he represents the captaincy very well. Um, you know, you look at uh, Pearson Brandon. Um, he's a pretty serious guy when it comes to the hockey. You know, he can certainly be a, a real good, friendly guy away from it, but he's a competitive guy. He wants to win. Uh, and then you have Riley Murphy, who has put every ounce of his, his blood, sweat and tears into this franchise uh, for a long time. You know, he's, he's his whole junior career has been spent with the Aberdeen Wings. And you see that paying off right now with his leadership on the ice. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's he's by far one of our better players night in, night out. And it's great to see. And then you, you bring Antonio Diapolo into the mix where, um, you know, he's a veteran guy that, that played in the Saskatchewan Junior League. and. Uh, He's a real focused individual and you watch him practice every day. You know, he's he's really serious about getting better and he's serious about setting the tone that way. And um, he has the right thing to say at the right time. And uh, he's completely bought in here. That That's a good group that we have. And, uh, you know, I think they all trust one another and, and that's the important thing. And they're going to figure out a way to, uh, to lead this group uh, to where we need to be. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, getting a chance to, to, to see this team well, obviously playing in the regular season, but even just being around them and their mentality a little bit, I could see a lot of that. Like you're talking about that competitiveness you know, guys like David Vaisberg, who was upset with the loss. And he talked about how he hates losing. You know, there's nothing worse than that. Guys like Guggins and you know, all down the line, it just really seemed like, like these guys are emotionally invested and all competitors. I would imagine that's something that you guys knew bringing them in as you brought them in, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, we, we you know, we know the guys that, that, either care about themselves or care about the the team and the wins and the losses and i think we have a lot of those guys here that just uh, they hate to lose and uh, but at the same time they have to learn from losing and we need to correct those mistakes and you know we need to each day get better and better and um that's going to be the big thing around here is just are we going to learn our lessons instead of hand and hand delivering points to hockey teams are we going to take it and grab it and go right okay well, like we talked about, folks, coming up this weekend, we have uh, the Central Division regular season, the playoff, and the, of course, Robertson Cup National Championship banner that will be unveiled on Friday night. So you want to come out for that. And of course, the Wings are hosting the Austin Bruins, the 27th and 28th. And then on the 28th, the ring ceremony will be uh, taking place before the game. The 2018-2019 away jersey raffle will be in the lobby each night. For all the latest news and information on the Wings, visit AberdeenWings.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. $15 Stutzman Harley-Davidson corporate area bar stool seats are available and reserved tickets are on sale now. Call Aaron to get yours at 605-380-5852. Doors open for all Wings home games at 530 and the puck always drops at 715. $10 general admission tickets are on sale now at any of the four C-Express locations in Aberdeen with additional purchase. So that will pretty much wrap up this week's Wings Weekly. Coach, uh, thanks again for taking some time to talk to us. Uh, great to see the uh, team in action over there uh, in Blaine, and best of luck coming up against Austin. Thanks, Jay. All right, folks, once again, that'll be it for this week's Wings Weekly.